<laughs> All right, everybody. Hello. Today uh, is. What is it? Travel Tuesday, Tuesday Travels. Tuesday Travels. <laughs> Today we are going to talk to you about a little experience that we had the other day. And it is called Candle Pin Bowling. Mm -hmm. And it originated in Worcester, Massachusetts. And it is a New England style bowling. There aren't very many alleys left. When we were talking to the person who owns that place, he said there must be like seven, seven total in the area, like within the whole New England area mm -hmm. that are left. And it's a very unique and interesting style of bowling. She's got her ball. Hey, man. Hold that up. What is that? What are we doing? Candle pin. But I'm, I'm just doing a, a dry run for us. Candle pin. No, that's your first throw. You got to throw it. That was a practice. You got to throw it, Pop. You ready? Back here in New England, this is what they do for bowling. They don't have regular bowling. You have a softball sized ball. Candle pin. So you still have 10, ten um, what do they call those? Pins. pins? Mm -hmm. 10 pins, but they're long, narrow, hence the name candle pin. Uh, say they're about that tall, mm -hmm. but they're narrow like yeah. that. And, and the then, same width all mm -hmm. the way up. Then you have a ball about the size of a shot put, much lighter. Believe me, you're not throwing a <laughs> shot put down the alley to use. And you get. Not two, but three throws. Three <laughs> throws to attempt to knock down a strike. And I can see why, because it's very, 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 very difficult to get a strike. Mm -hmm. Gosh, we got more gutter balls than... Yeah, my first throw, I threw all three balls in the gutter. Yeah. Not, it feels weird for like the, start. <laughs> for the avid bowler. You'd think that it's pretty easy, so you can grab the ball and then you want to... Like me personally, when I go bowling, I like to put a spin on it. And have it rush down the side of the gutter and then direct into the pins it doesn't work and i have fairly large hands for a woman and it was kind of hard for me to hold on <laughs> hold on to the ball so <laughs> it, it it's it's a challenge for sure i was the only one that got a spare though she did get the only mm -hmm. spare this so is, far i'm losing this is our second game Oh yeah, that's what he needed. See, here's our score. That was the first game. Pops, Jordan, me. So what we've learned about it so far is that it's really a Canadian thing. Yeah. But it was originated in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's more popular up in Canada is what we read. Mm -hmm. And not to be misconstrued or confused with what they call duck pin bowling. Which is what? You know more about that, yeah, right? Yeah, so the duck pin bowling, it's the same thing. It's a its a small ball yeah, like something that. Something in my hair. But the <laughs> um, pins look like regular bowling pins, except for they're smaller. They're short little things. About the size of my head. Yeah. But it was fun. Yeah. Right? It was fun. And um, do you remember the place that we went? <laughs> the name of it? No. Do you remember the town that we went to? Uh, wh wh started with a W. It was a small town. <laughs> we'll look it up and we'll add it. You will add the information of where we went. But it was a small town. And it wasn't a very busy alley. We were... There were three young boys bowling. Other than that, we were the only mm -hmm. ones. And it's, it's, it's really old. So we thought maybe the pins would reset after your three turns. But no, you have to actually hit the you reset the button, button every time. And... <laughs> Final score. I almost had it. Not Jordan. Not Jordan. He came in last place <laughs> both games. He had the lead for a little bit. I held on to it. Yeah, but you do it yourself. I'm the champion. I'm the champion, Jordan. He's not the champion. You gotta come on here and prove to Bowling champion. People train their whole life for this. How do you keep score? Oh, you have to keep it on paper. Pencil they don't even have paper. so it's not digital. So us who were used to going bowling in our age or anything like that would have always be like, wait a minute, can I input my name? But no, so you have to designate a scorekeeper. That was her. She's better with numbers. <laughs> but it was fun. So if anyone, any of you, are ever in the New England area, look up and take up advantage of the opportunity to go candle pin bowling. 
Yes. There's still a few alleys out there where they can accommodate for that. Mm -hmm. And it was moderately priced. It was, uh, actually it was kind of expensive, for, I think, because we got three people. three people, two games, and then I ordered two beers, and that was $50. 50 bucks. So that's kind of actually up there. When you usually, you can go bowling and it's like $2 a game if you find the right prices. Mm -hmm. But an experience and an adventure nonetheless, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely fun. So for Tuesday Travels, Candle Pin Bowling. Candle Pin Bowling. Give it a shot. Bye, everybody. Oh, man. One for the spare. If she picks this up, she wins. I don't know. It's not spare. Oh, no.